Hey, Brandon here. Welcome to the channel and thanks for tuning in. Got another 2024 rookie report here for you. I'll be joined again by my podcast co-host, Jason DiRienzo. Man, we've been firing out these rookie reports all season long for you guys. We're going to go over Mr. Trey Benson, Florida State true junior running back. You know, where is he going to be drafted in the draft? Is he an early round two guy or is he a late round two? Or is he going to sneak into an early day three? Well, Jason and I, we're going to cover that. We're going to go over scouting report. We've watched the all 22 film on this guy. We're going to tell you his good traits, his bad traits, and where we think, um, you know, his dynasty projection is going to be as well. You play dynasty, you're looking for a YouTube channel out there that's going to give you a look, an in-depth look at these this year's rookies as well as next year's and in the future. Um, uh, we are ahead of the curve on this YouTube channel, man. So please hit that subscribe button. Help me grow the channel. Let's get to the show. All right, Jason. Let's get to a Mr. Trey Benson, running back, six foot, two hundred and sixteen pound, true junior. All right, he plays at Florida State. I cut up a couple all twenty two films for us this week. His last two games of the season, Florida and Louisville, um, went to the combine and killed it with a four point three forty. You know, he's the talk of the mm -hmm. town coming out of the combine. Um, yeah. yeah, he's uh, got everyone excited because we know he brings the physicality and all that good stuff. We're going to talk about that here in a minute. But let's go through his career statistics. 285 carries for 1,800 yards, 24 TDs, averaging 6.4 yards a carry, which is pretty, pretty solid. To only 29 receptions over three seasons, 321 yards, and one TD. Um, averaging 11 yards through the air. And get this, not one fumble in three seasons. Not one fumble. At least, at least on That's PFF, amazing. right? So the right. dude's got to have some strong hands, some strong arms, you know, because they can't get that. I will they say can't. this real quick, though, Brandon. I fell for that with Hassan Haskins, too. So okay. it's it's a big deal, but... <laughs> It doesn't. It's not the end all be all. Let's I'm just. I'm just pointing out the stats. That's all. I, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's a great um, stat. Yeah. So the rushing grade, eighty six, um, which is just over seventy fifth percentile yards after contact, three point six six. That's also seventy fifth percentile and elusive rating. 107.9. That is uh, close to the 80th percentile. Carries at 15 yards or more. He had 15, tied for 55th in college football. Yards after contact with 551 yards, ranked 85th in college football. And missed tackles, forced 45, ranked 71st. So um, pretty productive player over three seasons. Yeah. Yep. You know, absolutely. Coming, coming off that injury, too. So he's rebounded. So that's a nice thing, too. You know, the combine's a lot about medicals. So it uh, looks like uh, that knee is, uh, he had a pretty horrific knee injury, I believe. Uh, so it looks like he's good to go. So, you know, what did you think of those two films that I sent you? I mean, of course, we've been watching Trey Benson. We've watched many, many more films, but I just wanted to cut up his last two, um, you know, because they mm -hmm. were important games. I wanted to see what he brought to the table during these important games. And, and you know, he didn't have Travis, so it was a little different. But what did you see from a skill set standpoint? I, you know, within that Florida game that you had sent over, when I was watching that game, the first thing you can see, the acceleration, the initial acceleration is absolutely there. So that that's step one. I, I like to know that he's explosive right when he gets the ball and that, that he checked that box. I like the speed to the perimeter. Um, I like the speed that he tempos himself with in between the trenches as well. So if he sees an open gap, it doesn't take him much to, you know, just hit that igniter button and zoom right through it and get uh, into the second level pretty quickly. We saw that he has that 439 speed and that's on full display into the second level into the third as well. Um, you know, I, I like the elusiveness. I think he's got pretty fluid change of direction for his size. So that was really impressive. The receiving ability. I think he's a, yeah, I think he's a very serviceable receiver, runs mm -hmm. decent routes. So that's another checkbox for me um, where I where it drives me crazy with him. And I told you before we got on, like, I just kept bringing commitment issues, commitment issues. I think I love him after he gets through the trenches, like from the second level on, I see him as an RB one <laughs> behind the line of scrimmage with the vision and indecisiveness and trying to figure things out and dancing around. I I'm concerned that he's ever going to get into the second level sometimes. And I saw it right out the gate in that Florida film. So to me, it's the vision, it's the slow mental processing, the indecisiveness. And I just kept writing commitment issue. And <laughs> every film that I'm watching, I'm like, dude, just commit to the gap and just go like, don't dance around. Like it's available. Just go. Uh, yeah. So that, that I think is really what, 
what's going to hold him back. But the athleticism, his receiving ability, the functional strength too. I love the lower center of the gravity. He's not scared to put his shoulders down and jam himself into trash and get through it. So I think he checks a lot of boxes, but the most important one for me is the intelligence and what he sees behind the line of scrimmage. I'm a little concerned. I saw some of the same issues from Cam Akers, and I'm hoping that that doesn't plague him once he gets to the next level. Yeah, it's uh, you know, it's a great summary. I mean, I, I you know, some of the things that I looked at to him, he's got that functional play strength, right? He's got that mm-hmm. hammer mentality. I don't know if I see the same speed outside that you see. I, I came away very. Oh, I saw it. Yeah, uh, yeah. I didn't. I I came away a little unimpressed, thinking like, okay, you you've got to work in between the tackles. I mean, he's not a guy that I think. I don't care what he ran at the at the combine. That's just my opinion. Um, but. I didn't think he he really won working outside necessarily, but I, I understand the indecision, um, completely get it. I, I was just so frustrated watching these two games because I felt like there were opportunities missed along the line of scrimmage, and he seemed to like give up on plays a little bit. You know what I mean? When there was congestion, sure, yeah, just, I saw that too. Just yep. seemed to like kind of fall forward and and like not really trying to to work it. But then there's other plays that you're like, okay, there you go. That's what I see. So there's a lot of inconsistencies in his game, which has me nervous mm-hmm. a little bit. I mean, because I have him pretty ranked high right now, um, but I, I came away watching these these films uh, like a little you know concerned, and I think. The one thing I also saw in the second level um, is when he was approaching a linebacker with with that speed that he has, I didn't see any change of direction skill without him like really lowering down or not even able to like shimmy a guy, you know, like if he was approaching a linebacker and the linebacker was like, okay, what's this guy going to do and approaches him like he didn't have the ability to shake and bake him a little bit. So I think he's got some good footwork. I mean, I'm always looking for sweet mm-hmm. feet for running backs. I think he's got the ability to put a jump cut or two together or whatever. But at those higher speeds, I think a lot of running backs, that's where they struggle to be able to change direction, plan a foot and make a guy miss. And I, I really didn't see a lot of that in Trey Benson. So he looked like a kind of like a physical grinder kind of running back. And that's what we've seen on film. So I'm now I'm confused as to how high I really want him in my ranks after kind of watching these films. I mean, it's uh it was very inconsistent for me. So he's definitely, he's intriguing, but he's, it gets a little bit tough once you watch the film, trying to figure out what he's going to be. Yeah. And I think that that's what we talked about, right? I mean, there's no RB one in this class necessarily. And I think right. really landing spot and, and opportunity is going to trump, you know, most of these guys. And that's kind of where we are. All of these running backs in this draft have some sort of flaw or size issue or something that is kind of holding them back from being a consistent, you know, one or two of these guys are going to emerge. But in any case, let's get to the NFL draft capital. Yep. Um, I have, um, I kind of have a late second, third round grade on them. I mean, I, 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 I could see not a running back coming off until the third, the third round in this draft. I am almost exactly at that point. Late, late second, early third. I think that's the sweet spot for him. And then a rookie draft. I mean, he might, you know, there might be one or two running backs, depending on draft capital and good landing spots and opportunities um, that might sneak into the first round. And if Trey Benson mm-hmm. is one of the first or second or third running backs taken, and like let's end up with maybe with the Chargers with Harbaugh, you know, if Eckler's not back. I mean, there's a lot of really good, you know, Dallas Cowboys in the second round or something like that. You know, I, I think he could maybe be late first, early second. Yeah, I think he's going to fall into the first. I think it's the scarcity of the position at running back right now that, you know, people are going to try to be grabbing what they can. And I mean, I think either Trey Benson, Jalen Wright or Marshawn Lloyd, one of those three is going to find the way in the first. And I think Benson might be that guy. Yeah. So who's your uh, player comp? Uh, my, yeah, my player comp is Marlon Mack. Like, I see a lot of similarities with these two. I think Benson's a little bit more explosive, but some of the same issues I had with Marlon Mack coming out um, of uh, USF, I got to see a lot of him up close and personal being from Tampa. Uh, I, I see some of the same things the, the indecisiveness and, you know, just a lot of wasted movement behind the light of scrimmage. And just, I want to see more commitment to the gap. And I, I think once he gets to an NFL team that, if it's a gap scheme, I think he'll be fine because you can coach that. So I, it makes me feel a little bit better about him. And I think that's exactly how what happened with Marlon Mack when he got to the Colts. Like things started to click. I'm hoping for the same thing from Benson. 
Yeah, I had a kind of a fun comp for this. I, for some reason, I was on YouTube and I ended up watching a lot of Leonard Fournette, right? And Leonard Fournette had mm -hmm. a much more of a lateral ability, obviously, coming out of LSU. was a much better player. And I'm not saying the ceiling of Trey Benson is going to be, but watching those two players, I kind of found, you know, a similarity in their their pad level and their, their toughness. I mean, you can compare these guys to a lot of different big physical running backs. But all right, man, mm -hmm. so we're going to have to see where he goes. Um you know, in the draft, it's going to be fun to see yeah. where he ends up getting drafted. So there is our uh, rookie report on Mr. Trey Benson.